every desert and come back again we could go any distance to chase down every dream we could reach all the stars but in the end i know where we belong i know a place where we can go
from the Courtyard Marriott in Nashua, New Hampshire. It's the Marguerite's Place Late Night Show with your host, radio and TV superstar, Mike Morin. Featuring musical guest, Keith Wyrick. Thank you for supporting Marguerite's Place. And now, please welcome to the stage, Mike Morin. Tell you what, it's a good thing my cardio is in good shape thanks to all the work I've been doing on the Peloton because I knew this night would happen. Hey everybody, good evening. I'm Mike Morin, radio and TV host, Nashua Telegraph columnist and author. And tonight, once again, very excited to have the opportunity to be your master of ceremonies. And I'm thrilled to be a part of such an amazing organization and to watch their programs grow over the years. In fact, every year when I host this event, I, I seem to learn something new. And my hope is that you'll learn a little bit more about Marguerite's Place tonight with me. So with this being the largest fundraiser of the year, it would not be successful without your support and the support of our sponsors, which we will highlight throughout the program. Now, before we get started, take a chance now to log on to marguerite'splace.live and make sure that you have registered to bid in our virtual auction. Now, when you get onto the site, scroll about halfway down the page until you see the Register Now tile. Click on that button and you'll be redirected to our bidding portal. And if you haven't already registered, we'll quickly and securely take some information from you. Now, if you have already registered, then you're all set. You're off to the races. Click the Bid Now button and you'll know exactly what to do. Do the right thing. Help us out and support all the work that we're doing. All right, I've been told that it's uh, time for you to get your tickets for the Peloton bike raffle. There's just a little time left, $50 a ticket could win you a Peloton bike and you could be in as great a cardio shape as I am, maybe, ish. Uh, ticket sales close at 7.15 and we will pull the winner live at the end of the program. Also, the silent auction will close at eight o'clock tonight. That's less than an hour. So get your bids in right now, please. All right, let's kick off the program and hear from board chair Rich Guidaboni, who is with me tonight. 
And uh, Rich is not out of breath. He's doing just fine. Rich, Mike, thank you. Welcome back. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Marguerite's Place Late Night Show hosted by Mike Morn. My name is Rich Guidaboni, and I'm current chair for Marguerite's Place Board of Directors. On behalf of the Marguerite's Place Board of Directors, I'd like to thank everyone who makes this annual event such a success and a great night of fun. The corporate sponsors, all the donors, the MP staff, Krista and all the development committee, MP Board of Directors, and the volunteers who have spent countless hours planning and organizing. And a big thank you to all of you joining us today online or at watch parties in support of the women and children at Marguerite's Place. Tonight, you'll hear from Board Chair Brian Hall, President of Phys Physician Resources Limited. Brian will be discussing his company's commitment and engagement in giving back to the community. And you'll hear from our Executive Director, Hannah Stoller, who will provide some highlights about Marguerite's Place, residential, and child care programs. There'll be an opportunity to support the organization and its mission through the online auction with some very unique items this year. There is a raffle for a Peloton bike again this year, and the fund and provides an opportunity if you miss out on the auction or the raffle. Your support is critical to providing ongoing assistance to MP families, including housing, child care, and services provided by the unbelievable staff. For those of you that have attended previous galas and events, we thank you for your continued support. For those that are new to the MP community, thank you, and we hope that as you learn more about Marguerite's Place, it inspires you to become part of the community. I'd also like to thank Hannah and her dedicated staff, the senior staff, the teachers, and volunteers, who all play such an important role on a daily basis in fulfilling the mission of putting women on a path to self-sufficiency and giving them and their children a safe and supportive environment to thrive. We're grateful to have them in our community, and especially at Marguerite's Place. Thank you very much for your generosity, and have a great night. Rich, thank you, and I know for sure that uh, Marguerite's Place is in good hands, thanks to you, so appreciate that. All right, sponsors, we couldn't do it without them. As you know, PRL is uh, a sustaining, ongoing sponsor, and we want to thank Microdesk as well for being a big part of this. Right now, it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce you to the woman who does a lot of work here that kind of behind the scenes, but not tonight. You get to meet her. She is the executive director. Welcome, Hannah Stoller. Hannah, come on up. Mike. Hello. Good to see you. Has a year really gone by since we did the last virtual show? Time is just a construct in these weird, unprecedented wow. times. Let me, let me write that down. That's, <laughs> that's pretty profound. Well, the work you're doing here is very profound, and in a few moments we're going to actually uh, hear from some of the current and past residents here at Marguerite's Place who've had amazing transformations in their life. Uh, but what would cause somebody, you know, in general, to need the services of Marguerite's Place? Sure. Well, their stories, our resident stories, are as unique as they are, um, and we really focus on meeting everyone individually where they are. But there definitely are common threads that um, tie the reasons why someone ends up on Marguerite's Place doorstep. Those are um, childhood trauma or adulthood trauma, uh, leaving or needing to flee a domestic violence relationship, um, history of substance use and now seeking recovery, um, or kind of a combination of all of those things. Um, and at the same time, I think uh, the past few years has really been an example of how uh, the environment can also be a big factor in that. We know that there's huge rising costs in housing in Nashua, but also everywhere in America. Um, we know that the cost of childcare can be pretty prohibitive for families to be able to hold down a job. Um, and um, the economy, uh, with everything going on, can fluctuate. And just like this, a family who's on their feet can lose a job and a domino effect of need can um, uh, happen next. Sure. You, uh, you mentioned trauma. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of these women go from traumatic situations in their lives. What happens next once they come to see you? Yeah, so the first step is that they move into a fully furnished apartment um, on Palm Street. And fully furnished for us means <coughs> pots and pans in the kitchen cabinets, sheets on the bed, art on the walls, um, which uh, seems kind of like a silly thing to say, but I think a lot of people have this stigma of a shelter. They envision a big room with 15 set of bunk beds and everyone <laughs> in a, a space together. And we really pride ourselves on um, starting with home as being step one of when you've experienced trauma, if you're coming from living in your car 
um, sleeping on your aunt's couch this week and your cousin's couch the next week. Um, it is uh, truly the first step of healing to have your own front door, um, get in there and just breathe. Um, and so uh, that's a huge part of how our program works and that's yeah. really step one. I have seen a lot of the units and people would be surprised that it's not just junk furniture, it's mm -hmm. some very nice donations from people who care very much about these women and you would never be ashamed to, to go into a place like that because they are comfortable. All right, so you mentioned couch surfing, um, I mean living in tents, living in your car. So they get to the apartment, what happens next? Yeah, so the work begins pretty soon after mm -hmm. that. Um, so after moving in and stabilizing, families begin to work directly with our Director of Res Residential Services, who provides case management and coaching to families. And together, they start to build a plan, um, a long-term goal of uh, moving on, having self-sufficiency, having a career you love and are proud of, higher education, um, making sure you have mental health supports or recovery supports, if that's part of your um, history and needs. And from that big plan, they backtrack and create some uh, achievable short-term goals. And after really that first phase, they continue to work together on a week-to-week -week basis um, to provide resources, connections, and also um, our staff to be that kind of accountability guide of, hey, we said we'd be doing this now, let's check in about that. Mm -hmm. So you talk about some new successes in life. I mean, I'm liking where the story is going at this point. Yeah. So how does this help the families move on to real independence from what you've built up to this point? Sure, so understanding that for many of our families, this is their first time being in their own apartment and having to learn all of those um, life skills of what does it take to um, parent full time while working full time and maintain a home. And so we really walk with people so that they can build those skills. Um, and then be ready to move on from there. Um, and then on the technical side, side it's um, uh, building up your work experience so that you can afford market rate Nashua, um, both jobs and um, housing, um, and um, building the skills in terms of um, savings, paying bills on time, increasing credit score, um, taking the time to do all of those things and practice day in, day out. Um, you know, we think of it that um, Success is not, there's no such thing as overnight success. Um, it's done in uh, one million little steps. And so what we do is help people take those million steps and when they uh, might step off course, um, bring them back uh, to what we had as our kind of vision goal plan for their future. Well, you, you lay out that game plan. I'm gonna guess it could be a little intimidating for women who are coming out of the lowest points mm. in their lives. So recently I was here and I got to meet some of the women. I mean, it's one thing to hear us talk about it, but it's another thing to hear their stories, and it makes it real. So let's listen to some of the, uh, the women that I talked to recently here at Marguerite's Place. Amazing stories. I would love you to meet Michelle, who used to actually live on campus here, but because things are going well for her, she has moved up to the, is it the condo complex Yep, now? I'm up at one of their condo locations. Sure. And then the next step would be into your own private Correct. housing. Correct, my own but place. One step at a time. Absolutely. This is my friend Miricha. Am I even close to pronouncing your name right? It's perfect. <laughs> uh, you're, you're too kind. <laughs> and uh, I didn't realize until we just sat down that you haven't lived here for a long time. And that's... That's kind of good news. Yes. Right? Yes, it is. So this is Christy, and Christy uh, doesn't live on the main campus any longer, and we'll get to that part of the story here in just a moment. But let's go back to the very beginning when perhaps things weren't so good in your life, uh, and it seems like so many lives have been turned around in a very positive way thanks to Marguerite's place. So why did you come here? So I, um, I have two kids. Mm -hmm. um, one is 10 and one is 2. Um, I am a recovering addict. I was newly in recovery when I found out I was pregnant with my second. And I was living in an apartment with, surrounded by a lot of um, drinking and other things going on. On top of getting pregnant and having another child to support alone, um, I knew I was not gonna be able to do it. Why Marguerite's Place? Why did you find it necessary to take advantage of the help you could get here? Um, I had a friend who lived here and I was currently homeless, struggling with the girls, staying with their grandparents, me in my car some nights, and uh, my friend was living here and she told me to apply. 
I had my son at 24, mm -hmm. and when I moved in here, he was almost one. We celebrated his first birthday here, him and I, in right. the apartment. We needed our own space, and so I heard about Marguerite's place. I was looking into other housing. Um, I had tried getting into other housing, mm -hmm. but um, the Marguerite's place was the first place to really hear me and see. I feel like they see, saw what I needed and wanted to help me right away. Well, this is what they do, and you're not the first person, obviously, in, in a tough situation. But I'm thinking you got two kids that you could have lost. Yeah. When I was trying to get into shelters, it was impossible. They didn't have many women's beds, and I just thought that there wasn't many women that sure. were homeless. That's why there weren't any beds. What did it do to your self-esteem to find yourself homeless, sleeping in a car or wherever? Um, it dropped my self-esteem pretty low because I was fresh in recovery and I felt like it put me on edge to make bad mistakes if uh, the chance was there. This was a new chance for you because you can actually have your children here. Absolutely. Which I'm going to guess probably not when you had your car as your home. No, it was very hard. They were staying different places just sure. so they had a roof. How long did you live here on Palm Street? Uh, a little under two years. Right. And they worked with you, right, to, to get you back into the working world? Did they kind of give you some new life skills? They did. They got me into um, school. Um, I got my certificate in as a community health worker. Um, they showed me some volunteer work. Um, Patty would check in with me every week and mm -hmm. I, they just, they talking to me every week and checking in and getting to know me and what would be good for me. They were always finding new things for me to better my life and, and right. picking so, life skills based on what I needed. How did they help you kind of pick you up and, and get you, you know, kind of rebooted in your life so that you could support yourself. Well, it was wonderful. The director that was here helped me out with getting interview clothes and actually helping me with a job over at City Hall. Really? Yeah. So she was teaching you some of the things that maybe you just weren't equipped to deal with. I mean, going out on a job interview, filling out an application, right. having the right clothes. Mm -hmm. Could you have done that by yourself maybe if you were still living with your dad? No. No. I didn't have the guidance or even the the means. They gave me a chance to kind of catch my breath, mm -hmm. um, figure out what I wanted to do. They didn't push me to get right back to work. They wanted me to make the right steps so I didn't feel sure. overwhelmed. But getting back to work is important, oh, yeah. clearly. And so how is that going or where do you stand with that? Um, I ended up getting a job at Home Depot. Not something I expected because I've never been in retail. <laughs> but really? It's been a great opportunity because I'm now a um, department supervisor and I worked my way up. You are now living uh, free and independently, correct? And, and yes. uh, how did that come about? Coming here and learning my worth and learning what I can do. I didn't think I could ever go to school with two kids and being able to be here and save money and spend more time focusing on work. Um, the job that I have now pays sure. well and that's the, even the job that I have now is... sure. Thanks so much. So as you look back from when you first moved in here, day one to where you are today, it must feel pretty gratifying. It does. And the credit goes to? Marguerite's place. That's great. Hey, thank you for joining us today <laughs> and, and sharing your wonderful story with, with all the people that we hope are going to support Marguerite's place. Yes. Continued uh, good things. Yes. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. You've learned a lot, and now you're sharing it with other people, which is... Wonderful. That's my goal. I hope to keep sharing. Now check that box. You're doing it. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Well, hey, look, at uh, Michelle, I'm glad that, uh, that things are going well for you. And thank you for taking the time to give encouragement to uh, other women who were in your boat, and maybe even worse. Absolutely. To make their way to Marguerite's place and get a new start in life. Thank you for listening. And thank you. An amazing group of women. And I have to tell you, it was eye-opening for me to visit Marguerite's Day and meet all those women who are on the way up. So this is the impact that Marguerite's Place has had for over 27 years. Let's all come together tonight and help raise the funds needed to help keep these programs going strong. We have a ton of exciting items up for bid on our website. 
MargaritesPlace.live right now. All the money raised from our virtual auction tonight directly benefits the incredible work that Marguerite's Place is doing for the women and children in our community. But if you're feeling generous this evening and want to have a powerful impact on these programs, consider giving to our Fund a Need. Simply check on Fund a Need tile on the bidding portal. Now, a $2,500 Fund a Need donation provides about two weeks of coaching and case management for our residents. Every resident in our transition housing program receives a minimum of 10 hours of case management a month. So between all those families, we're in for about uh, 1,200 hours of case management a year, and that does not come cheap. This case management ranges from housing advocacy, court accompaniment, job search support, mental health stabilization, parenting resources, and more. This personalized relationship is the bridge for our families that helps them transition from crisis to long-term self-sufficiency. Let's have a look. Hi, my name's Erin. When I was a resident at Marguerite's Place, I would meet with my case manager weekly this is very short. to help set goals and plan for my future, and it was a relationship I still cherish to this day. Good. So as a former resident of Marguerite's Place, I met with my case manager one, oh, that's what she said, right? Right. Keep rolling along. All right, do you know about Marguerite's Place Savings Match Program? Residents of Marguerite's Place are encouraged to build healthy financial habits and develop their own nest egg by contributing to their savings account. To incentivize this, Marguerite's Place will match any savings deposit up to $50 per month. Your funding need gift of $1,000 helped to cover the cost of the Saving Match Program for an entire year. $500 covers the cost of groceries for our child care center for just two weeks, 500 bucks. Every child enrolled in our child care program receives a USDA-approved breakfast, lunch, and snack. We keep the cost of our food prep low due to the support of our amazing volunteers who help us to prepare lunch every day of the week. Your $500 fund-a-need donation would support this cute face. Hi, my name is Sherry. I'm one of the volunteers here at Marguerite's Place. I come in during the week and help volunteer making lunches for our preschool and toddler room. Marguerite's Place also provides breakfast, lunch, and healthy snacks for the kiddos. Um, our preschool and toddler room definitely love their snacks. It's a well-balanced meal throughout the day while they're here. Marguerite's Place also provides all the formula for our beautiful babies in the infant room and your donations would be very much appreciated. Thank you. So of course there's plenty of fun on the playground which provides a sanctuary to our child care services here at Marguerite's Place. And of course the resident children who do live here or kids can be just kids. We work hard to maintain the space in tip-top shape, which includes making sure we are always following all safety guidelines, including frequent mulching, weeding, and maintenance of the playground equipment. And don't forget, Fund a Need is probably the most important thing that we're gonna do tonight in terms of keeping the coffers filled with the money we need to get everything done that needs to happen at Marguerite's Place. I'm told right now we're only at about 50%, so uh, let's, let's keep it going, keep those donations coming. We have a lot of generous friends watching, that I know, and you're going to meet one of the most generous year after year for Marguerite's Place. Right now, I'd like to bring out my next guest. He is Brian Hall, uh, President and COO of PRL, one of Marguerite's Place's corporate partners. Please welcome Brian Hall. Good to see you. Very nice to see you. Uh, have, have a seat. Now, the last time I saw you, you were at your house. We were, a virtual uh, watch party. It, 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 you know, and that was because of the, the pandemic, and it it's was. hard to believe we've, we've come this far. So now we're about five feet apart. Right. Next year, how close will we be? Right. Maybe Tell in person, fully <laughs> live. Yeah. All right, PRL, you've been big supporters of Marguerite's Place, but there are going to be people saying, I don't know if I know that name. So right. what was it before, and now you've gone to letters, I assume, to make it easier to remember. Exactly. Yeah. We were Physicians Resources Limited. PRL was always our nickname, so we decided to, to adopt that as our, our new brand. And we're a healthcare revenue cycle firm based out of Merrimack, New Hampshire. What we do is provide healthcare practices with the tools, the strategy, and the guidance they need to really optimize their rev cycle, leverage technology, and make sure their patients have a great experience. Yeah, they need to be doctors and not finance people. Right. So you help them navigate all that. We do. We want them to be able to practice medicine. 
We take right. care of the rest. The important reason why you're here is that you've been a big supporter for years of Marguerite's Place, uh, committed to giving back and engaging in local communities. So tell us about that. Yeah, for us, it, it's really part of the, the vision at PRL. And our vision is to better the everyday life of our people, our, our, our customers, and our community. And for us, you know, our leadership team gets behind that, our entire company gets behind it, and that's evident in our relationships with like companies like Marguerite's Place, organizations like Marguerite's Place, and even some of the others in the area that we support, like the Boys and Girls Club in Nashua, Big Brothers Big Sisters, and United Way, just to name a few. And for us, it wasn't you know, just about uh, giving. It was also about giving time a, a, as well. And we spend a lot of time engaging. We're not the silent partner. Mm -hmm. you know, we don't sit back as a company. We really get engaged and want to be active partners. And we you know, internally took, spent a lot of time really from an organizational standpoint thinking of ways we could do that. And we spent time creating a, a volunteer committee and a diversity and culture committee that really spent a lot of their time building awareness within our company, supporting the organizations, um, and really arranging fundraisers and arranging uh, you know, supporting uh, volunteer events as well. And then on the same side as that, we also went and adjusted our policies so that we have paid volunteer time, we have flexible schedules, and really make volunteering part of our, our ingrained in our culture, ultimately. Yeah, I'm kind of intrigued by the volunteering aspect within yeah. your company. I'll get to that in just a moment. Sure. But I always wonder when somebody not only puts their heart but their money behind Marguerite's Place, why this organization? Yeah, we, you know, it's funny. We, we chose Marguerite's Place for, I think, there's really two or three main reasons. One is we wanted to support an organization local in our community here in Nashua. And uh, we have a lot of employees in Nashua. A lot of us grew up in the area. Two is we, their mission really tied well back to our values. And that was a big thing for us and, and was very important. And I'd say third, when you look at Marguerite's Place, their unique approach you know, of whole family supported of services really resonated with our leadership team and our entire company. A lot of companies, and I know this, you've been up front with this, uh, give volunteer, I think, paid time off to, yeah. to work with organizations. So tell us about the people that work for you that also do work for Marguerite's Place. Yeah, we have a great team, and they get to engage with Marguerite's Place in all kinds mm -hmm. of different ways, right? Whether or not it's, it's painting you know, condos, cleaning condos, uh, helping raise uh, supply, you know, doing supply drives for, for back to school and for the daycare, uh, Christmas holiday support for the parents or the families, and then also getting involved in you know big events like the golf tournament, if we having that, or Over the Edge, which was a great one for us this year. Is that the one uh, in downtown Manchester? It is, when they, they, they the repel. Building? It is. Did you repel? I did not repel. I'm getting pushed <laughs> to do that next year. You'll see that. <laughs> okay. We will be, but we, you know, we, we combined with a few other uh, organizations or other uh, companies ended up being, I think, the second fundraiser in there. So our team worked hard in there and really raised a lot of money, both yeah. for Marguerite's Place and the United Way there. I was supposed to do the rappel thing yeah. a couple of years ago, but then uh, I wasn't working at the radio station any longer, and I thought, that's yeah, really off. Yeah. I, I'm off the hook this time around. Uh, before we, we finish, and you may have answered this kind of in some of your previous questions, but again, you really step up to the plate as a sponsor, not just a one-time or right. a one-off, but it, it's a monthly commitment on your part so why the intensity there yeah it's, it's a great question and for us it's funny uh, you know I'll start and we'll say this in just a little bit but my controller and my finance team love it right one they can budget appropriately and plan appropriately <laughs> so it makes their lives easier but uh, in the flip side of that it allows we saw it as an opportunity to allow Marguerite's place to to use that money you know in a consistent manner and be, uh, be able to include it in their budget and their cash flow mm -hmm. and not be wondering when they're gonna get you know one-time donations and I'd say last for us is it created consistency. You know, we see it in our financials. We share it across the company. So it's it's kind of like exercise, eat, exercising, eating well, right? It becomes routine, and we made it a routine within the company, and I think it continues to engage uh, our, across our entire company. Well, we can't thank you enough uh, because you really do mean business, I can tell. I can I can see the passion. Yeah, it's Just fun. be careful next year on the repelling. Yeah, I will. I we will. want you back in the seat next year. That's, that's the plan for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. And by the way, if you have a company that you work for uh, or you're an owner or whatever and you would like to uh, do it, Brian and his company does, please be in touch with the folks here at Marguerite Place, Marguerite's Place because we would take as many friends like this guy as we can get our hands on. All right, let's hear a few words now from our littlest friends at Marguerite's Place because after all, it is about families, the moms and the little kids. And when we get back, we're going to be pulling the winner of the Peloton Raffle. If you haven't already purchased your ticket, Please do so. This is your last chance. All right, let's hear from the kids.
Well, I hope you're enjoying this evening's program. I want to thank everybody. Uh, we're not done yet, by the way. I know it sounds like I'm wrapping up, but we are doing a lot of things. We're taking a look at the auction, keeping track of that. We are also um, getting the final, I guess, drawing ready for the Peloton bike and the one-year membership. That's like the hottest thing right now. It was very popular last year. So if you are one of the people that paid $50, we can't thank you enough for your contribution there and your contribution for everything. Um, and we also want you to know that even though this is the one night that we are working very hard to raise money, it does mean the other 364 days of year, we're not hoping that you'll participate. Typically, we do this as a dinner, and because of the last couple of years and COVID, uh, we chose to, uh, to go this route, and it's been a lot of fun. It's a live broadcast, so if you saw a little mistake or two along the way, you knew it was live. And we're having a great time. And, and most of all, we appreciate the fact that you have been so generous, not only this day and this year, but going back 27 years. And I've uh, been very fortunate to be a part of this uh, wonderful uh, program for almost 15 years myself. So maybe next year, we'll see you at dinner. Thanks. So tell me what your name is, like we just met. Abby. Abby? And who is your friend here that you're holding? Chase. And Chase, of course, is on one of my favorite movies, Paw Patrol. Have you been watching it a long time? Yeah. Uh-huh. Ever since I was little. Because you're not little now. Like seven years old. You are. Okay, so can you, can we sing the Paw Patrol song? Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, get there on the double. I love that show. You did a great job on that. So why are you wearing a tiara on your head? Because I'm a princess at the puppet shop. I love grilled cheese. I make really grilled cheese. Really, really good grilled cheese. I didn't bring any today. I wish I would have known. I would have done that. There's a basketball over there. Here's Abby at the free throw line, ladies and gentlemen. And it's in. Give her a hand, our basketball star. All right, let, can you slam dunk it? That might be asking too much, right? You're not going to get bubbles on me again, are you? No. Oh. Are you doing it now? Yeah. So what's your name? McKenna Lake. M McKenna? McKenna Lake. Oh, very good. And um, so how do you like school here? Good. What's, what's the best part of school when you're in there with your teachers? Outside and coloring. You know, everybody seems to like coming outside. And you like coloring? Do you have coloring books, or do you make your own pictures? Yeah, I make our own pictures and color. All right, and what do you like to draw the most, like your mom or a dog or what? A movie. A movie? Do you have a favorite movie, one that you like? Wh which one? It's called, it's called, it's called to Power. Oh, I thought maybe you would say Frozen. Do, do you like Frozen? Oh, Pikachu. Yes. I know who Pikachu is. Can you make a funny face for me? Look into the camera and make a funny I, I, face. No, I, no, I want to use that. I want to use do you want to do the interview? And, what, and what's your name? Brandon. My name's Brandon. Brandon. Uh, Brennan or Brandon? I'm uh, Brandon. You're Brandon. Brandon, how old are you? I'm four. You're I'm, four? Yeah. How old, how old do you think I am? Twelve? <laughs> Twelve? Yeah. Did you ever see a 12-year-old that shaved high. before? Because yeah. I shaved it. Really? Yeah. Do you, do you shave yet? Yeah. You do? Really? I do. Uh, by the way, you have the best hair I've ever okay, seen. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, he's done with me. Z I'm Zayden, four. come talk to me. You're four, yeah. and you live here, right? Yeah. Uh-huh, and how do you like your house? Good. Yeah, and uh, good. so tell me, tell me about your mom. Is she a good cook? So I found out earlier that um, Abby's favorite food that her mom makes is macaroni. And, and, and what about what's your favorite that mom makes for you? It's what? Um, bubble on you. There's a bubble on me. Yeah, I didn't put it on you. Are you are you blowing bubbles on me? Yeah. 
All right, I want everybody to blow bubbles on me because I love bubbles. Hey, who can make who can make a sound like a cow? What does a cow do? Wow, you two guys, Zayden and uh, Brandon, are really good. All right, what about a chicken? Any idea what a chicken sounds? Like? Anybody know what a hippopotamus does? That's okay. Hi, who are you? Good. You're good, yeah? <laughs> really? We need to see somebody put the, uh, that ball may be a little bit too heavy for Wes. All right, let's get some, let's get some balls in here. Nice shot. We got a winner right here. Give me a high five. Good job. What do we call this? A jungle gym. A jungle gym. All right, so. The dome. Is this your favorite part of the playground? Yeah. Really? Oh, so you're doing yoga on the dome? Ballet. Can you can you say thanks for watching? Thanks for Mar coming to Marguerite's place. Thanks for coming to Marguerite's place. Say wave goodbye to everybody Bye. in that camera over there. Thank you, Abby. I'm not as good at this as I used to be as a kid. They just have nicer well, bubbles. You, you win the bubble prize, by the way. And, of course, I'm still getting the bubble stains out of my clothes <laughs> at home, but that's okay. It was fun. I had so much fun that day. You probably could tell, right, that I'm really a, a five-year-old in an old man's body. <laughs> they bring so much joy oh, they every day. really do. And that's all a big uh, part of the child care uh, program that you've put together here at Marguerite's Place. So walk us through what it is that you do that makes life so joyous for these kids. Yeah, so Marguerite's Place Child Care Program actually started at the same time 27 years ago that our wow. transitional housing programs did with the mentality that if the goal was that um, women who were moving into Marguerite's Place got back to work or to full-time school as soon as possible, mm -hmm. they needed child care. Um, but since then it has evolved so much, uh, not just to be meeting a need of the parent, but to understand uh, that the kids in our care um, need some extra supports too. So many of them have experienced um, homelessness or, or other traumas alongside their parents. And so um, come in um, uh, needing a little bit more structure, um, some extra skills being taught to them, things like that. So I've heard the expression uh, intentional supports. Is that kind of what you were just telling us? Maybe you could expand on that. Just sure. Yeah, so um, it's not normal that you would take the time to train a um, preschool uh, teaching staff to be trauma-informed, but we take the extra steps to do that, and so they're um, trauma-informed trained, and they're also um, trained in social-emotional learning, um, knowing that sometimes experiencing really heavy experiences as a little child with a developing brain means that you need um, specific curriculum to help you develop the things that you might have missed out on. Uh, yeah, so all these things, while the kids are having fun playing, they're also being fed or there's the, a culture of what you just talked about, dealing with the trauma, adding the structure in their life and the support. They had none of that before probably, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what that actually looks like, it's kind of a big term, trauma-informed teaching. Mm -hmm. What it looks like in practice is it just changes maybe how you lay out your classroom. It means making sure we're providing um, two meals a day and a snack, diapers, and uh, formula for all families, knowing that that might be a, a barrier that they're facing at home that we can cover. And it means when we see something that would look like a bad behavior, um, for a kid throwing a tantrum in another way, our teachers actually stop and say, hmm, where might this be coming from and how can we um, help them build a different coping skill? Amazing training that I know that your, uh, your people must have. So you mentioned parental success and earlier you said that your child care families also engage in your supportive services program. So tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we run a family support group that's open to both resident families and child care families. Um, and that's a time um, when parents come together, kids get um, to go off with their teachers um, for an extended period of time, Have um, everyone has a meal, and then parents get the support they need to process um, the highs and lows of parenting. So we really try and include 
all of the families who walk through the doors of Marguerite's Place every day in that way. Um, but also within our classroom, our teachers um, will uh, often go to IEP meetings when a kid is trans uh, transitioning from preschool to kindergarten. Um, they meet with our child care parents um, for um, case management and to give them supports uh, parenting tips. Here's what we're seeing in the classroom. Maybe try this at home. I actually can think of um, one family who uh, there is a, a child who had just moved in with his mom to Marguerite's place and was kind of having a little bit of a hard time mm -hmm. adapting to the childcare space. He'd never been in one before. And um, what was really working in the classroom was breathing techniques that Miss Jamie, our preschool teacher, was doing with um, him. And Miss Jamie took the time to tell his mom about this and mom is working with our case management staff and she's reporting from the other angle wow these breathing techniques actually are helping at home too and so there's this really cool um, wraparound holistic view where every member of the family is getting the support they need at this period of transition. So you really integrate uh, parental experience as well yes. you know you're talking with the kids during the day and then you somehow try to work at least in this case sure. you work the parents in and, and finally uh, you talked about the big and small successes. You know, we talked about the, the moms, the, the grown-ups. How does this look, the big and small successes in child care? So proportionately, they're smaller because we're talking about okay. smaller, younger children. Right. Um, but um, the big successes looks like a child who is showing really um, visible signs of traumatic experience coming in, seeing those go away, um, being ready to go into kindergarten without needing any type of um, special supports within the public school system. Um, small successes are every day. Um, we um, never tell the parents that their first steps happen at school. They can always happen at home, but we get to see lots of kids having their first steps at school, laughing, learning, um, getting to write their letters for the first time. It's just um, really wonderful and we have so many kids who um, stay with us for their entire child care experience and so we see them from six weeks old until they're going to kindergarten um, and so it really is a reminder of um, why the work of Marguerite's Place is so important. I think there's so much focus on the transformation of the parent which is huge um, but we also get to break a cycle of trauma for a child at a time when their brains are so resilient that in fact they can completely overcome this and we get to see that happen um, again in all the little moments and the laughter of every day. So I would like uh, folks to uh, watch another one of the, not resident in this case, but a child care mom. Maybe you could just give me a little background on Christina and what brought her to use child care services at Marguerite's Place before we roll the tape. Sure. Uh, so without giving away too much of her okay. own story, uh, Christina um, came to Marguerite's Place after experiencing domestic violence. Sure. Um, and she was a single parent who, um, without the supports of affordable child care that was going to provide her with the wraparound services, might have next ended up in need of our housing services. And so mm -hmm. um, she really tells it wonderfully, but um, it was the extra supports of the um, reducing that financial bar barrier with the diapers and formula and the meals. Um, and um, being able to um, access our staff as a support system to provide case management, um, make connections through referrals and resources to our wide sure. network we have in Nashville that yeah. really made a huge difference. I felt it was important to get a little bit uh, of the background before we hear her words, because she'll put it the way she lived it, but at least now we have a little uh, reference point to see where she's coming from. Watch this, it's Christina. This is Christina, who doesn't live here as, as our other guests have, but you have uh, one of your children here? Yes. So you must believe enough in the mission and what they do that you are very comfortable having one of your children here, considering you never lived here. Absolutely, I am now, but to be honest, I wasn't in the beginning. And why was that? Because what brought me here in the first place was getting out of a domestic violent relationship. And I had found out that both of my boys had suffered trauma and I did not trust anybody. Wow. It, it took a lot and it took me needing to go back to work. And when I started calling around for childcare, Marguerite's Place was the top of my list specifically because they also provided diapers and meals. And that to me was huge. That's an expense that I have a really hard time making. Marguerite's Place is the first child care center I've seen that offers wraparound services for every parent that uses mm -hmm. their child care. And one of the first things I ended up taking advantage of was their parent support group. 
We'd get to come in every three weeks or so. They provided dinner, they provided childcare, and we would get to sit down and talk about the struggles of being a parent. And it was meeting the other families and the other women and seeing that I'm not alone, that I'm not the only one that's gone through this. I have a four-year-old son that's in their preschool and he's been okay. there now for three years. How does he two like years. It? He loves it. On the yeah. weekends, he gets so mad and he'll tell me, <laughs> I want to go to preschool and see Miss Jamie. Um, he loves the staff here. He's comfortable here. And that's, that's huge. That is huge. You've come from basically not trusting anybody to now running for school board. How do, you, how do you feel about, you must feel much better about yourself now than you did, you know, however many years ago it was. So I've tried to tell people when I first walked in these doors, mm -hmm. I was broken. I was half of a person. I didn't know how to trust people. I didn't know what I was doing. I had a lot of issues thinking that I was a problem. I was a bad parent. I didn't have a voice anymore. Marguerite's place, even though I wasn't a resident, they still made sure that I had access to the most important resource they have, which is their compassion. And I would come in and I would explain my situation to them, whether it was a financial situation. Halfway through the pandemic, I emailed Candace and told her, I can't do this anymore. I'm going crazy. My kids are driving me nuts. When are you reopening? When is this happening? <laughs> and she made it a point to do just to drive by and see me two days later in my parking lot, socially distanced, you know, and that, that means so much. Is it safe to say, and I'm going to be a little dramatic here, that it was a lifesaver for you that you connected here eventually? It's more than a lifesaver because without them, I can only imagine how long it would have taken for us to end up homeless. And at the time, our homeless shelters were all at a three month plus wait list, including emergency shelters. I cannot imagine making it through that first winter without a home. Christina, it's, it's a great story. I'm so happy it ends this way. And folks, this is why we need you to do the right thing and make sure that Marguerite's Place doesn't run out of money because the pandemic isn't over. There are still women like Christina that are coming from a much worse place than she is now. And you can make the difference. Christina, well told and good luck Thank with the election. You. I appreciate it. Thank you for having sure. me. All right, so a little housekeeping, and then we are going to draw the winner of the Peloton bike and the one-year program that goes along with it. First of all, fun to eat. Please continue to make those donations for the next three days, right? I mean, it's, it's going to be going on. However, the auction uh, is going to wind up. We've extended it a couple extra minutes. We ran a, a few minutes later than we had hoped to. So that works out for your benefit because we will close the auction instead of 8 at 8.15. With that all said, I think we have one last bit of business, well, besides our closing number and that is the winner of the Peloton uh, exercise machine and uh, Heather Stoller an outstanding job tonight thank you very much for your help and for all the work you do at Marguerite's place she doesn't have a mic on she can't talk so I could say anything and you know she'd have to lip sync it anyway I have opened it up and I will well you probably can't read it so I will read it for you the winner of the Peloton bike and one year membership for the program that goes along with it is Tyler Susie. Tyler Susie is the winner. Congratulations. Enjoy the bike and enjoy the rest of our show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to enjoy this next part. Thanks, Heather, or Hannah. Wow, what a night it's been. Amazing. Thank you so much for your support of the mission of Marguerite's Place. All right, now I hear the music. To close things out tonight, I'm going to bring you a, a gentleman who's actually played on Broadway with Julie Andrews, Richard Chamberlain, Donny Osmond, and others. Currently the artistic director of Nashua's famed Peacock Players. What an honor to bring to our stage to close it out tonight, Mr. Keith Wyrick. I'll never be a knight in armor with a sword in hand. Like Don Quixote, don't count on me to storm the barricade and take a stand or hold my ground. You'll never see any scars or wounds. I don't walk on coals. 
cherry on top of the, the sundae or whatever. Thank you. I'm sorry if that's, I hope that wasn't an insult. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. It actually sounds good. I want to go get a sundae right now. Oh, I'm with you, but there's no friendlies around anymore. Anyway, thank you to everybody who contributed to Marguerite's Place tonight. Congratulations to our Peloton winner. And of course, the Peacock player is very lucky to have this man right here, Keith Weirich. See you next year. Thanks, everybody. Good night.
So alive, I feel so alive.